millionaires are not queuing up to get into the life insurance business. But some of the people who come into the life insurance business through discipline become millionaires. And what does my favorite athlete, Stephen Redgrave, say about discipline? He was asked if the iron in supplements athletes take help them succeed. He said it isn't iron in the supplements that helps success, it's iron in the mind. Do we have iron in the mind? Uh, I had a client who, from very, very humble beginnings, built a very, very large and very successful business. And I would visit him every year, and he'd sit in his big office behind his big desk, and on his desk there would only ever be one piece of paper. And I asked him on one occasion, what do you keep on your piece of paper on your desk? He said, Tony, it's the secret of my success. I said, share it. He said, well, it's really very simple. Before I go home at the end of the day, I make a list of what I intend to do tomorrow. When I come in in the morning, I start at the top of the list and work through. Is this a new idea? Of course not. How many of us have a list on our desk of what it is we intend to do on Monday morning? Of course, most of us. Here's the difference. I also asked him the obvious question. I said, tell me, what happens on those days you don't get to the bottom of your list? He said, Tony, you weren't listening. Some days I get to go home early. And some days I stay and work late. But I always finish what's on my list. Discipline, discipline, discipline. Now, some of you may want to know what happened in my granddaughter's race. You'll recall, scattered all over the field, the teacher pulled them all back together again. And she said to the kids, you see the two older girls holding the tape across? She said, when I say go, I want you to run until you get to the tape. Are you ready? Are you set? Go. And every one of them stopped in front of the tape. Finish what we set out to do. It's discipline. And never go home on a negative. You know those days when everything goes wrong? Does anybody ever have those? You know, when, when, when the big sale we were going to make, not only did he not buy or she not buy, but they weren't even there when we called for the check. Has that ever happened to any of you? Yeah, of course it does. So what do we do? We go home at the end of the day. And our much beloved says, how was your day? It was terrible. I think I'm in the wrong business. And what does our beloved say? Well, it's up to you, dear. You know I'll support whatever decision you make. And by the time we have slept on it, by the next morning we are convinced we're in the wrong business. Never go home on a negative. On those days when everything goes wrong, go back to the office, pick up the telephone, make some calls until somebody says yes to an appointment. And now we go home on a positive note. How was your day, darling? It was disappointing. But at least I ended by doing something to move my career forward. We should try to end every day on a positive note. And here's a simple idea, a simple idea that we could all put into practice on Monday that can make an enormous difference. Stop telling prospects and clients what they need and start to ask them what they want. Why? Because what our clients and prospects want will always always be much greater than just their needs. Look, let me illustrate this for you. If, God forbid, if I don't make it home from this meeting, my family do not need the homes we own, the cars we drive, but I would want them to be able to live in the world I've created. When my younger daughter left home, I said to my wife, darling, we don't need this big house anymore. Let's downsize to something smaller. What did she say? We may not need this house, but this is where I want to live. She also said, you can move if you want to, but I'm staying. <laughs> 
Two people live in a house with five bedrooms and five reception rooms and there are three cars in the driveway for two people. Well, there will be when I, <laughs> when I replace the one that uh, injured my hand. Why? For two people? Why? It's what we want. Remember what clients and prospects want will always, always be bigger than their needs. You see, it repositions us. When we tell somebody what they need, we are selling to them. Find out what they want. We're helping them to buy. It is a tiny, subtle difference. But I can assure you, it's worth millions. How to do it? It's simple. Mohan, how much do you want as income for yourself when you don't want to work anymore? How much do you want as income for your family in the event of your untimely death? What would you want as income for yourself in the event of diagnosis of a life-threatening illness? What do you want? They'll tell you what they want. Here's another question. You might want to write this down. When you retire, when you don't want to work anymore, would you like your income to be smaller, larger, or the same? In the event of diagnosis of a life-threatening illness, would you like your income to be less, more, or the same? In the event of your death, would you like your family's income to be more, less, or the same? doesn't matter whether they say more or less or the same. It takes us straight into a discussion on creating a fund to provide the income. There's a young man in the UK... I always tell this story, and last time he heard me tell it, he said he's not so young anymore. About 15 years ago, he qualified for the top of the table for the first time. And he came to the top of the table meeting, and I congratulated him, and I said, what did you do that made the difference? And he said, I took your advice, Tony. I said, but we've never met before. And he said, I was sitting in the back of the room at a meeting, just like today's. He said, and you told us, Stop telling people what they need and start asking them what they want. He said, it's the only change I made. My business went up by 40%. 40% is the only change he made. I've been telling this story in virtually every speech I've made ever since that day. And he heard me tell the story at another meeting a few years later. And afterwards he came up to me and said, Tony, I am the young man in your story, aren't I? I said, yes, you are. Why? He said, I owe you an apology. I said, what for? He said, when I told you my business went up by 40%, I lied. I said, why did you lie to me? He said, because my business went up by over 100%. I didn't think you'd believe it. One small change and his business more than doubled. Stop telling people what they need and start asking them what they want. Why? Because what our prospects and clients want will always be bigger than just their needs. And we have to have the courage to think bigger. Bigger does not mean more complicated. Bigger simply means bigger. Does anybody here ski? Now, I know this is a crazy question to ask in a country that doesn't have mountains, at least doesn't have snow on its mountains, but has anybody here ever been foolish enough to go skiing? Oh, there are always a couple of lunatics. Okay. I, I think skiing is the craziest thing in the world. You spend, you pay money, you take about two hours to go slowly up to the top of a mountain, you stick a piece of polished wood on your feet, you take two minutes to get back to the bottom of the mountain, if you don't have to get in the ambulance, you pay money to do it again. <laughs> you might think, what does this have to do with our business? Well, here's a question. And even those who don't ski should be able to figure out the answer to this. When they go skiing, you ready? When they go skiing, shout out the answer. When they go skiing, do they ski uphill or do they ski downhill? Answer. Downhill. downhill. Next question. Why? Because it's easier. What does this have to do with our business? Everything. Next time you haven't taken illustration to a client or prospect, always take the illustration for the biggest sum assured, the biggest possible premium for all of their capital. They will ski down 
to where they're comfortable. But if you take an illustration for a small premium, they will never ski uphill. Remember, it is easier to ski downhill than uphill. Will we remember this? Yes! yes.